Uh, hey there and welcome to the Picking Fruits YouTube channel. Uh, today we are going to show you how to prepare some pre-mixed agar. And some of the things you're going to need to get this done are going to be some water. In this case we are using some grain water from previously cooked grains. You're going to need a way to measure your fluids. You're going to need a media bottle to prepare and cook your agar in. In this case, we are using a bottle specifically designed for autoclaving. You can always substitute the bottle for a whiskey bottle that has been pre-modified to allow um, gas exchange so your bottle doesn't explode on you. We're also going to be using some Tyvek as a filtration, a stir bar, or pre-mix in this case, it's charcoal premix, a spoon to stir, and some aluminum foil to top the, the top of the bottle when we are done. So the first step here is going to take 500 milliliters of water. It's always better to have a little bit have the water a little bit on the warmer side to allow the premix to stir a little bit easier. The colder the water, the, the more uh, clumping you're going to experience. And here is our charcoal premix. In this case, it is malt extract agar with charcoal. We're going to dump the whole thing in here, and this here will prepare 500 milliliters of agar for pouring into 20 100 millimeter dishes. So once you have your premix poured into the water, we're going to mix it. Try to mix this thoroughly. And now if you don't if you aren't able to mix it thoroughly, it really doesn't matter because when it's being autoclaved, it's going to melt everything together and it's going to mix really nicely but we are going to try to get it as thoroughly mixed as possible. So once you feel that your mix is thoroughly dissolved in the fluid, we will then pour it into our media bottle. I have here a small funnel to help us not make a mess. So once our premix is in the bottle, We can put these things aside. We're gonna take our stir bar and drop it into the mix. And then we will cover the opening of the bottle with Tyvek. We will put the cap on this and we will screw it on very loosely. So we are not gonna tighten it all the way down. We're gonna leave a little bit of a gap or a little bit, a couple threads unscrewed just to allow any pressure to uh, be relieved. Once your bottle cap is screwed on, we will cover this with aluminum foil and we will get ready for the next step, which is going to be taking it to the autoclave. Okay, so now that you have your agar in your media bottle, we are going to sterilize it at 15 PSI for 30 minutes. And when we're cooking any agar solutions in our pressure cookers, we want to make sure that the water level is level to the agar inside of the bottle and what this will help prevent is overflow and overflow is when you have your water cooled down faster than your agar solution and that extra heat will cause it to lift over and out and spill all over the inside of your pressure cooker 
So once this is all cool and ready, I'll be back. So about three hours after the cook has been done, we come back to remove the media bottles and set them on the stir plates. This is an optional step to disperse the sediment at the bottom of the bottles. Okay, so now that we've had our media bottle sitting on the stir plate, making sure that the sediment is being distributed all throughout the bottle, we are now getting ready to pour. At this stage, we are going to spray this bottle down with isopropyl alcohol just to make sure there is nothing lingering on our bottle. We wouldn't want to transfer any kind of contaminations over to our petri dishes. And as an added layer of protection, we have included a Tyvek filter in here. And as you can see, agar did not overflow or boil over. To achieve this, try leaving the bottle undisturbed for about three hours after the PC cycle is complete. So now that our media bottle is nice and clean, we are going to open up this pack of sterile petri dishes and now this pack here is 20 dishes that are 100 millimeters wide by 15 millimeters thick and so the best way to pour agar is to pour it when it is slightly above body temperature which is slightly above 98 degrees. Anywhere from 98 degrees all the way down to 91 degrees is a suitable temperature to pour your plates. If you wait any longer than that, you'll notice that the agar will start to firm and become a solid mass inside of your bottle, and we do not want that. So very carefully, clean your hands and remove the filter if you've used the filter. And the trick to pour an agar is to never get anything in between the flow hood, the flow hood's flow and the surface of the bottle. So never place anything directly behind your, your objects that you're working with in order to keep them sterile. So when we start pouring into the plates, we're just going to make sure that we lightly cover the bottom of the plate and move on. So we're going to start by lifting the whole stack and only leaving behind the plate that we intend to fill. So as soon as you've seen that the bottom is covered, we can move on to the next plate. Placing the lid on the previous plate and removing the full stack for the next board. And if done correctly, these 500 milliliters of agar solution should be enough to cover every plate in your sleeve. A typical sleeve consists of 20 plates So when you're shopping around for agar plates, make sure that you're picking up the right amount of plates per sleeve. There are some manufacturers out there that provide 30 or 25 plates per sleeve, and that'll, that'll throw off your recipe off just a tad bit. Also, the slower you pour, the less chances of bubbles. So you'll notice it, this, this will be kind of like a jello. Anytime that there's water bubbles or air bubbles in the mixture, they will solidify and you will see them in the end product. If you do get bubbles, there's nothing wrong with that. The plates are still usable, but they're not going to be as aesthetically pleasing as it would be if they didn't have any bubbles. While working with agar, you want to be accurate as to not spill any of the agar on your table or on the other plates. And you want to be quick as well so that the agar solution doesn't solidify in the bottle for you. And also the cooler you can pour it, 
the less chance of condensation. You'll notice when the plates are completely, when we've poured all of the sleeve, you're gonna notice there's condensation on the top lid of the plate. The cooler you pour, the less chances of condensation. But if you do happen to get condensation, there is an easy fix to that. Simply place your plates upside down once you've wrapped them with parafilm and the condensation will be absorbed back into the agar solution. It always helps to be working on a level surface so that you have even dispersion of the plates. If your work table isn't leveled, you'll notice that you'll have a thicker side and you might even run out of solution before you're able to fill all of your plates. And always remember, never place any objects behind your plates or in front of your flow to make sure that the clean air is the only thing contacting your plates and solution. There you go.